My name is Anne Mierlund and I work here at CISAV as an uh, environmental educator. And CISAV is a company uh, that is owned by 14 municipalities and was founded in 1974. We collect waste from the municipalities, uh, combustible waste and food waste. And from the industries we have a lot of waste, for example, um, metal, wood uh, and combustible as well. What is this? Um, this is a brown paper bag that almost everyone has in the city Malmo. Um, in the apartment, and this is where I throw my food waste. And then it comes here to CISA. One of the principal problems with the residuals in the houses is that people confuse and mix everything, and in reality, the separation in origin is key. And in the case of the organic products, this bag allows you to individualize all these types of products and separate them from the plastic, the metal, and other things. So now we're going to have a look where it goes over here. Yep. Yeah. CISAP es una de las denominadas Waste to Energy Plant, una planta de proceso donde entra la basura y sale energía. Si en el capítulo anterior veíamos que en Chile mucho de lo que se consumía se donaba a instituciones sociales, aquí la necesidad está en conseguir calor y electricidad para toda la ciudad. Esta, esta parte es una, una sección del proceso donde todos los líquidos asociados a los lácteos, yogur, leche o algunos quesos también, los presionan con una, con una prensa y logran separar el líquido de lo que es el residuo, llámese el cartón o el plástico que viene en los tetrapacks, por ejemplo. Y lo que es la parte líquida se incinera. Entonces, de esa forma se, se logran separar. Hay un poquito olor a, como a queso en este lugar. No es malo, pero, pero se siente porque obviamente estamos trabajando sobre ese proceso. This is just the first step, and you can actually see some of the liquid over there in the containers. Lo, los productos que están allá abajo son productos que salieron de fábricas lácteas yeah. que o fueron sobreproducción o de alguna forma tienen algún tipo de falla que no puede salir a nivel de consumidores. Y esos productos son traídos a esta planta para el tratamiento posterior y obviamente well, separarlo know, if, if the, y reutilizarlo. If the uh, packaging is wrong. Exactamente. El, tienen problemas con los empaques, un mal etiquetado, etc. Y eso hace que esta planta los permita separar y, y sigamos en el proceso del, del residuo. Estamos en esta gran fábrica y es importante entender cómo a partir de los desechos se genera energía. Cuando nuestros residuos orgánicos están en presencia de oxígeno, por ejemplo una manzana que cae del árbol y se pudre en la tierra, allí se inició un proceso de compostaje, algo que muchos conocemos. Pero en cambio, cuando esos residuos se descomponen sin la presencia de oxígeno, producen gas metano, conocido como biogás. Cuando este gas se inflama y comienza la combustión, es capaz, por ejemplo, de calentar agua y el vapor de esa agua moverá una turbina, la que finalmente producirá electricidad. Uh, this is the turbine, so we make electricity and heating. So we heat up the house in Malmo City, for example, um, and we make electricity so we can have lamps. Es el camioncito de la de la basura pública. So the red one over there that has food waste in it, and it says thank you for the food. As I was saying, that in Sweden we are good to handle our waste, of course, but a lot of other countries don't have the nice big systems for, for example, that we make district heating or energy, uh, electricity of, of the combustible waste, or uh, that we can make biogas and biofertilizers of the food waste. That's really good, but a lot of countries doesn't have that. So the waste in other countries of, often ends up in the ocean or on landfill, so unregulated landfills. And that's a big problem because landfills are creating methane um, when it breaks down. It's organic waste and it breaks down, it creates methane. And methane is about 25 times more dangerous as a gas in the atmosphere than um, carbon dioxide. I often talk about other ways uh, to actually spend your money or other ways to live. And it's really hard, of course, to talk about that. But for example, it could be, okay, you want a new sweater, 
Okay, first of all, why do you want a new sweater? Is it because you just, oh, I just want it, I am going out tonight or, or so? And, and talk about, okay, but where has the sweater been before you bought it? Where has it been made? In what country, what laws are over there? Could I have another option? Can I borrow a sweater from someone else, my friend or so? Could I buy second hand? Um, and we talk about when we talk to more adults over here, uh, we talk about in the way of living, should we own a car or could we be in a carpool? So we own it together. Because for example, myself, I take my bike to work, but sometimes I need a car. But it's unnecessary for me to own a car if it just stands still all the time. Uh, so I'm in a carpool, so we share cars. Um, I can book it with my smartphone. <laughs> Um, and I have it in just two minutes. But it's a smarter way of, of owning things. If you want to do something with your friends, don't go shopping and consuming. Do stuff, maybe go to the cinema or go to a Tivoli when I talk to younger kids and, and actually yeah, but cook food together. And that's the thing that you're actually going to remember, not the things that you buy. When I'm 90 years old thinking, oh, I should buy another sweater. I don't think that, and I don't think that, oh, in 2018, I should bought two sweaters more. I don't think that. I think of all the things that I actually wouldn't do because of I consume. I just think before you buy. Just think about it. Just take some seconds to think about it before.